So when I first started playing guitar, I was like, I really want to play guitar so I can play guitar on a rainy day. That was what I had in my mind. Like, I just want to sit by a window and play guitar. And we have a very rainy day, as I believe we have a couple rainy days in a row before us in Los Angeles. And seeing as I'm going to Mexico this week to play some shows with Dead and & Company, and I'm getting myself sort of back into the frame of mind of those songs, I found myself sitting on my couch practicing going, people might actually get something out of this. Having a good time watching like these masterclass videos. And I think about like, well, what could people dig that I'm doing that maybe they go home and want to pick up and, you know, somewhere on the ladder of looking at other guitar players and other guitar players looking at me. And so I thought that I would just, uh, also shout out to Melanie Faith for putting her practices up on Instagram live and kind of influencing me a little bit to want to do that. We all influence each other. Um, so, oh, I got to scroll this back down to where people are because you all written some funny stuff and I missed it. So here's where I'm at with my playing right now. I'm into playing lead lines that suggest chords without having to play chords. So we all, as guitar players, are looking for things to play over. Jam tracks or making, you know, making tracks we can play on or getting together with bands. And lately I've been into how you suggest the chords of playing. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. How you suggest the chords that you're playing without having to play the chords. So and this is actually how I practice for Dead & Company is I have these, uh, like a song like Sugary. It's the easiest song that I can use to suggest this to you. So it's B to E, right? E. B. E. So that's all it is. So you could go E. You can keep playing the chords underneath it, which is sort of the conventional way to look at it. But for me, what I practice is now um, suggesting those chords without having to play them. So it would sound like this if you take the chords out from under it. You can play some more chords. And go back to And I'm playing those pretty wrong. This is why it's practice. And also, you know, I'm not actually looking down at the guitar. <laughs> um, so those two chords. Uh, and part of the movement playing over top is understanding what chord you're moving to. I think guitar players do it without knowing they're doing it. We play a melody and it'll be in a certain key, but a certain key still has different chords that change. So that's still in the key of B. And if you wanted to, you could play B over it the whole time, right? And, and, and your ear would figure out a way to sort of navigate through it to make it sound like you just naturally would land on things that shared the B and the E scales. Um, and when you start getting into things like Ramble on Rose, that actually, some of that stuff is not in a diatonic scale. So it would be a D. So that's a D. And it moves to E, so the whole context moves to E at that point. So you'd be playing D. So 
So you have to constantly be aware of what key you're, what chord you're in, work in that key. And a way to express that is to sort of play the chords in a couple different parts of the neck as you're going. So you could go D, 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 E, 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 E. e. Now you know you're going to go to an F sharp minor. There's two places, main places that I would play it is N. This is an octave. And I could go to G here, or G here, or D. So I'm gonna play as many different chords, different inversions of chords as I can to show all these different places you can go. So it'd be like. knowledge of where each and everything is, you can start to fill in all of the gaps. You're right, and, and, and Eric Krasner can tell you it's one of the best songs to play over because your ear gets a fresh start on the key change. So you, you'll be playing in the... Now you're going to F sharp minor. You can go or or G or those are the same two chords. It's the same as and so you get all these different parts on the neck you can hang out in, and you can do some of it up here. So you can go. Let's do the same thing. Same thing. And when I when I say practicing guitar, I'm not really talking about practicing the physicality of playing the guitar. Like that part I have pretty like I'm, I'm I am where I am with that for better and for worse but I'm talking about plugging in all of these different uh, little modules of things you do on a guitar and creating one integrative look at the guitar and that's what playing Grateful Dead music has done for me is taken all these little departments you know we all know how to go To start to build out from that and understand, well, that's just not this little place you drop into. You don't parachute down to play Voodoo Child and then drop out again and go somewhere else on the guitar. That that's part of like and and actually, it's also a part of uh, so. We're really talking about like stitching all of these standalone things and a song can teach you how to play a riff but if you go backwards and figure out that the riff is part of a scale and the scale is part of a uh, sort of inversion of a, of a chord and it, not really an inversion of a chord but a different part of the neck right scales just become a little different when you play them in different parts of the neck they don't all they don't all look like this although it's fun to go and I always play the blue scale and call it the pentatonic scale I can't help but play I can't go it just doesn't sound right to me. So, do you think I need a haircut? Well, I don't know. I mean, don't I get a lot of credit if I clap back? What if I say something incredibly witty and also put down? My hair probably does need a haircut. I shake your hand on that. Don't really feel like dying on this hill. So, uh, also, I didn't do anything to my hair today. I'm just letting it just letting it go. I just want to do, I want to let it do my thing. So that's the practice, is playing these lead lines on top that suggest where the chords are. So again, D, E, F sharp minor, G, D, D, G, A. And you, it's not as complicated once you learn how the song goes. 
So you can go D E F sharp minor. D, that's D. Uh, nah, if I messed it up. That's why it's a tough song. <laughs> so. Ah. Uh. See? I'm, I'm going over my head on it. But you know what I'm saying. So I'm going to actually practice now for a minute. mess up, I'll figure out why I mess up. Where was I? D. And if you know you're in D, you just go. So you're trying to make it seamless. And that was what Mr. Jerry Garcia would do, is he knew the songs so well they all sounded seamless. Um, so anyway, uh, that's what I'm working on. Dun, 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 dun. Sometimes if you're too literal about the chords changing, I can hear it. And Eric can tell you also, like, if you're too literal about it, you're like, okay, you're just playing over the chords. So you also have to throw in some wonder and intrigue into the whole thing and just not know where you are, but kind of have it down, which is the best nights in the world is taking what you know and throwing it away, except I have to increase what I know because it's been a minute since I have played these songs and that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing, so... And you should be, be, be able to, ideally, just play it on one string and make it interesting. That's what I really try to do. Yeah, yeah, that's where E is. trying to get to is making these non-linear jumps so imagine and this is what Jerry Garcia did so well this is the final frontier of playing this stuff is making these what you call it string skipping these really large intervallic um, scene changes so most people would start working and most of the time Mr. Garcia would work chromatically and, and it's and everything would work sort of stepwise but if you start thinking in a really kind of remixy way, you'll be in B. So you gotta be. Here where I'm making these large kind of jumps, that's where, that's where I like sort of getting to now. So with that, it's not all so linear. That's one way to do it, and there's something about it, about that that's actually very uh, comforting to people's ears because it follows a pattern. But every once in a while to reverse, like do a quick U-turn into some other street, you know, 
That was an example of a good one. That was me moving into pentatonic. Back in a major. Remember Voodoo Child? You can do it up here. So that's the voodoo child. And if you want to also, you can stay in one spot and just keep working that and move between B and E in one spot. B. Uh. E. B. E. B. E. Constantly weaving in and out of where the chords are, and if you just instinctively start building this idea of, oh, I'm already right, I'm back in it. So here's what it sounds like to a guitar player in their head: B, 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 E. I'm playing an E. I'm playing an E. I'm playing some shit. I don't know where am I? Where am I? Oh, that's the thing from B. I'm back in B. Ah, da da da. E. I'm just gonna go for it for a while. That puts me in B again. Okay, I'm still in B. Uh, Da, 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 mm, da. Right here is E. That's the E from this thing. And I'll play the B next to that E. And it's just constantly working it out as you play. And then when you get into it, you're not thinking about any of that stuff anymore. But that's where it really begins to become very ear-based. You know, there's two ways to learn Photoshop. One is to sit and learn Photoshop just to learn it. And the other one is to sit and learn it to do a certain thing with it. And that's a strange metaphor, but it's the same thing with music. You can learn to play the guitar, or you can learn to play music on the guitar. And I think you should always be learning to play music on the guitar. So I'm constantly thinking about, well, what's the note I want to make? That's why it, the joy is that I sort of let my hands go in front of me, and then I catch up with my ears, and it's this dance between my hands and my ears. So it's a little Ouija board, and it's a little bit dictionary. And it's a friggin' joy. And of course, you're seeing this, me pick up the guitar for the first, I, I had this brought to my house, this is the... This is my guy, and um, just we, just like it's like getting on a surfboard, and um, so if you know what you want to play, it certainly makes playing easier. It doesn't mean you're going to hit what you want, but if you have, you even just begin to understand these melodic lines and where you want to take them. It's hard to do it and, you know. I just found myself, ah, I'm B. Now, the easiest way to do it, so some people are going to say, well, make it a little easier. Here's where you start. Just start moving the pentatonic scale. So I'll play you the most basic version of it. you start doing that that's the that's the simplest sort of beginning thing and they'll start to go you know be 
Well, guess what's right next to that? E. So watch this. B pentatonic to E pentatonic without moving. B. Voodoo child. B. Now, why does B sound so good over both chords? Well, because most of the time your ear finds the notes that they both share. B, E, B. Kind of like a flow thing, so B is kind of like a buddy. Yes, correct, correct. So that's what I sit and do and watch the rain uh, doing. So, you know, I'll pick other songs, and then there's other things that I just have to remember, the little pieces, you know. Um, but just getting the ethic down. So anyway, any questions? Any questions? I actually can't explain modes. I know what they mean. I know why they are what they are, but I, my, my, I, they don't agree with my mind. I know that it's the same chord, it's the same scale beginning on a different note. And I think that's a way to describe it, but it's not the best way to describe it, and no one's come up with a better way to describe it. Some things, some things I have to learn them to be able to explain them in a way to myself that I wish other people would have just been like, so that's what it is. But I, my brain doesn't understand modes based on, well, it's a major scale, but you would start on the th third note. It sounds like a crazy puzzle to me. Um, but what I do know is that certain modes sound like certain things. So if you say Lydian, I know that it will sound like this, you know, and so I can figure it out. And then some things like Dorian are like just major with an extra note in it or maybe that's mixed Lydian, I don't know. But you can feel it out. You'll begin to create your own uh, theory. How do I approach the pre-chorus to Shakedown? <laughs> Oh, right. Oh, it's F to E. Well, this is a very literal reading of F, the key of F to the E, you know. E. F, you know. But now you're moving the I did a little pentatonic there, so that's D. So what makes Grateful Dead music so interesting is that it really is in between pop music and jazz music. It is pop music with the sensibility of moving your playing over the chords the way jazz music has. Jazz music never stays still. It's constantly recontextualizing the scale for the chord. But same thing with, um, with most Grateful Dead music, which is what I dig about it. It is, for someone who's played guitar for a long time, it's just like mini games. Mini games. Here's D, play in D for a while. Oh, now you're in C minor, but now you're gonna be in F to E. So it, the, the, it's like muscle confusion for your brain. It's the best. The most difficult thing I ever learned. So that was the hardest thing I ever learned because I never used this finger on my hand before. I never played ba 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 da da. I never did that. And in fact, when I first started learning this stuff, this finger wouldn't move, wouldn't go down. So so let me inspire you, if I may, that you're never too old to learn a new trick because my hand. I've been playing for I don't know what is it now, twenty almost thirty years, and. 
when I first, 2015, started going through this music with a guitar in my hands, I couldn't, this, this, this wouldn't do that. This finger wouldn't do that. This wouldn't, this, you know, I played like. But I didn't, I didn't know. I lit, muscle-wise, ergonomically couldn't do it, so I had to teach myself. I really walked around with like the grip master and doing all that stuff and trying to, you know. Yes, I have to move my, I have to move my thumb to the back of the, I have to move my back, my thumb to the back of the neck to be able to, to support that. You can never, I don't think you could wrap your thumb and play linear that way. You kind of have to play like they teach you, like they teach you. All right. Well, I'm going to go back to learning some of the stuff. I think I did an okay job on some of that and I really bombed in a couple places but that's practicing that is practicing hey thank you um, hope you're well I'll see you again soon bye I love you though